Well, today I'm going to show you how to go from doors that are this honey oak look to the dark look. And this is kind of the shortcut method. Of course, it doesn't turn out quite as nice as when you do it the other way. So just in a second here, you're going to see what they look like after where they were done. We're just about there. There you go. Take a look at that. Well, today we've got um, this door here. Uh, and she she doesn't want it the light lighter oak and she doesn't really like oak grain um, so we're gonna attempt to darken this up now there's a couple of ways you can do that so you could do this by stripping the whole door um, and then dyeing the door with a with a dye not stain a dye and uh, after you get done dyeing it and then you go through and stain it and then uh, comes out really nice that way um, but uh, you'll end up with the grain still uh, but it'll come out really dark you can go really really dark with it um, but you'll still have the heavy grain or there's another way to do it which is a little less time is time is coming up I'm gonna tell you some other other ways I've seen uh, there's guys that use um, they use uh, let's see if I can put this on the stand so it's a little more steady they use um, they use stuff called uh, stainable primer, which is super expensive. You know, there really isn't any much need for that. Uh, if you see the bottom of the door down here, uh, there's a lot of staining on the bottom. And if you wanted to fix all that, um, the best way to do that is using bleach. So, uh, not regular household bleach. It does work, but they have a wood bleach, and you put the wood bleach on the uh, on the stain down here on the bottom and you put wood bleach on there and then let that set for a period of time and what that does is you might have to put two or three coats of it on there and that would uh, get rid of that step that, that stain um, we're not really gonna attack that I don't I'm not sure how we're gonna approach that yet but um, it depends on how it looks you know I, I'm gonna go ahead and put the stain on take a look at it you know and then go from there um, if I need to do a repair to that we'll do that um, but those are different ways you can things you can use to approach this type of a wood restoration now these doors are pretty expensive so rather than going to like maple uh, which is kind of what she likes that kind of a grain we're gonna attempt to uh, use a, a brush stroke to uh, replicate some grain and try and make it look pretty good um, without uh, you know and the worst scenario is let's say you didn't like it you can always strip the door and start over because pretty much that's where you're at right now it needs to be stripped but um, we're gonna try and forego that by using gel stain now if you use regular stain what happens you have to wipe it with a uh, by hand because if you leave it on it will never dry but gel stain is basically almost a polyurethane type stain and uh, and that stain you it can put it on let it dry um, and then you can go ahead and go over that with polyurethane so we're going to attempt to do that on this door and salvage it and uh, keep it looking good and see what happens so stay tuned and first thing we're going to do is i'm going to show you guys uh, real quick one of the things i like to use and versus using as i use these little sponge pads you get these at o'reilly auto parts um, and these are stick it uh, sandpaper because you know the other kind of sandpaper you get at the paint store is actually pretty good but I'm going to use this um, just because it, it, it does a little less damage to your hands uh, especially in the corners and edges and all that stuff and because uh, those those can be pretty sharp on these doors and uh, especially oak it's really 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 strong wood and the corners get you pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and use this do a little bit of sanding and uh, stay tuned we'll watch that all right so we'll go ahead and do some sanding here all we're going to do now is just stuff it down. We're not going to try and, I'm going to remove the hardware in a second. Now she actually wants that to be antique as well. But uh, this is how these little sponge pads work. And uh, that's how they kind of get into the scratch, you know. You don't want to knock off the corners or anything like that too much. Like I said, I'm just going to just knock this down. 
frame's kind of lifted because the varnish is really worn off the door. And at the end, we're going to use uh, spar urethane oil base. It's one of the oil, only oil based products left in California. I don't know if I can trust the water based stuff. I haven't really tried it. So it might be okay. But anymore, I just don't do wood. I just don't turn it down because of the possibilities of problems with it. And you, know, you used to get make good money on wood stain. You used to get double what you got. And so for the edges and corners, I'm actually just going to use a piece of Scotch Brite. <clears throat> and then when I sand around the glass. Kind of stay away from it an eighth of an inch for now. I'm going to get some tape out in a little bit and go ahead and tape the glass off. So I'm going to use uh, spray finish the uh, all the urethane. I'm going to do them up in place versus taking them off uh, for two reasons. One is so bugs don't get into the house. Dust and bugs. You can cover it all up by using a drop cloth. And if the wind comes up, it takes that off easily. Um, so I'm just going to leave it in place here. Then I'm going to tape the insides of the door off. Uh, I'll just run tape around all the cracks and spray it in place. And I'll just take a brush when I'm done and do the do the styles to make it look good. So anyway, I'll go ahead and put you guys on hold. Uh, We'll, uh, maybe we'll do this in a fast motion, who knows, and uh, something like that, I'm not sure yet. The next step is to, I went ahead and took the this is a cap spray, old one. The new ones have the two filters on the side. Very old unit. Had it for many years. It works great still, so no need to get a new one. Uh, cap sprayed it down really good with air. And then go ahead and wipe it all down. Everything's been scuffed. Now, a lot of people, if you're, it all depends how much sanding you need to do. All depends on how heavily weathered it is. So... Um, a lot of people think you have to sand and sand and sand and but because this is a bit weathered and there's no sheen left here on this um, you'll find that you know you don't, you don't need to do it near as much sanding just a little bit of scuffing if, if even really that because um, you just want to get off all the uh, you know just get it to where the, the next coat will stick and Usually it doesn't take as much as what people think. Um, a lot of these house materials are designed for uh, adhesion. So anyway, can you go ahead and just wipe this whole thing down? Still gonna leave the hardware on. I'm actually probably not gonna get to today to spraying it. Uh, there's a lot of wind. It was gonna, it was, it was blowing by 35, 40 miles an hour a few minutes ago. And uh, it's just too much to spray. But um, you know, when I do a lot of these doors, I'll actually, if I've stripped the whole thing, you know, a lot of these I'll just strip them all. And the oak turns out really good. Uh, the, uh, you know, like these little corners, you can actually take a little bit of 80 and just pull, that'll pull that stain off of there. Um, I'll probably even do that, but I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and start brushing it first. And then I'll go through and see what it shows up. And then I'll just go ahead and just take a little sandpaper, do a little touch up, and it works fine. So a lot of people think, oh, you got to get all that done now. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes you'll be doing too much prep and you'll find out something that's not even going to show up. You sit there and spend a lot of time. I know that will, but um, the reason I'm not going to do it right now is because then I can show you guys how to fix that later if I need to. Um, I can just hit a piece, a little piece of 80 and just kind of get in the corner and go with the grain a little bit and just get that right off. Um, so, but a lot of people, uh, the, the, the woods that come out good. Uh, oak turns out good. Mahogany turns out good. Cherry, not so much. And maple, not so much. And most time, you can't get those to look very good. Um, cherry uh, is kind of iffy. Kind of comes out okay. 
um, but it usually if it's been if it's been weathered too long a lot of times it will actually still stain really and go really dark on it so um, those woods uh, tend to do that um, maple uh, it just doesn't usually work um, going over it like what I'm doing right now you could possibly do with that but you're gonna have a heavy brush mark in it it's gonna show up it's not gonna look quite the same as if you strip it and go over it and I'm not really doing it that way so like there's two different processes to doing this one way would be strip it all and then uh, like I said if I want to go really dark you use dye dye first dye is alcohol uh, thins with alcohol they have it at like Rockler wood supply in little tiny bottles and also at Sherwin Williams and you would dye the whole door first and then you would get it dark the dye will make it turn oak like you can turn oak black with dye if you want you can spray it on the on the and it would soak into the grain soaks in and dye will actually go through lacquer um, but this isn't lacquer this is polyurethane so it is exterior in fact no stains are typically for exterior in fact I'm going to read the label on that one to make sure because I don't think it is for exterior but when you put the polyurethane that is for exterior over that that protects um, the stain that's underneath from the UV so that's how that works but anyway um, dye you dye, dye the thing first then what you do is you go over it with uh, with it after that I do it with a wiping stain so I'll get it dark as dark as I want it to you know to the shade I want it then I'll go over it with a wiping stain afterwards and then I'll go over it with the polyurethane sand it and go with another coat of polyurethane that's if you want a really really custom bitch and door we're not gonna do that it's too much work takes a lot of time and of course nobody today really wants to pay for that so I'm gonna show you guys alternative way that's what we're doing you here all right, so we were just doing some stain samples to figure out what to do with this. And uh, you could, you know, uh, I've got a couple different gel stains here. I've got this one here from Old Masters and uh, American Walnut, really dark. And then when I sampled putting that on there full strength, I didn't really like it. Then I had some of this Olympic stuff that I just had laying around. This is Colonial Oak. Look at the color there, um, and the the thing about the colonial oak is it kind of it kind of stains on the surface and less on the grain. Uh, the uh, old masters, if I wipe it, it tends to go to the you know it tends to go grain all grain. So what I'm kind of do on this thing is kind of do a faux uh, wood grain. I'm not going to do a full wipe, so I'm going to go through here. It, there's with gel stain, you can do partial wipe, full wipe. You can do, uh, you know, if you want to do like normal stain, you'd put it on and wipe it off, right? Normal oil stain. Uh, but with gel stain, if you want it a little bit darker, I kind of want to kill some of that grain. If you can see, there's a heavy grain right here. Uh, I've actually already done this part with the gel stain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually dry out my brush by scraping it on the edge. And then I'm just going to start going over it and do something called dry brushing until I get it to the right color that I want. So it's going to take a while to stain this door. I mean, it's going to be something that's going to take a little bit of time. I have to stain it, wipe it, and then kind of wipe, wipe over this if I think it's a little bit too too much like that. And then just dry my brush out a little more and just get it to where it kind of stains the grain. And then just kind of play with it. It's, it's, it's not, this is like artwork, okay? This is not like a process where you can, you know, where I, where I just go through and just stain it and wipe it. Um, because I'm trying to go darker than normal, I'm kind of doing like a faux type of a dark stain. So like if I just do this area right here um, and then just wipe it, if you can see that, like if I just do it like that and then just wipe it, this is just wiped over here and this is actually then I go back over it and dry brush it so I actually tap my brush in the paint and the material like this okay tap it and then scrape everything I can get off off of it and then kind of dry my brush out you know kind of dry it out any way you can sometimes I'll just put a little bit on here and then I'll dry it out while you're doing that let me just get this going it's really hard for me to do this in the camera but um, so you'll see that I kind of do that with it 
and then I might wipe it a little bit. So I'll go through here and I'll kind of do that section and I'll kind of wipe a little bit more off until I get what I want on there. And then go back and hit it again. So it's a bit of a process. You're gonna you're gonna leave a little bit of brush mark in there. And if you can see there's brush mark still there. And it's gonna be kind of oral old world. We're in the corners and stuff. It's still heavy. Uh, that's why I'm not really worried about these parts down here where I was showing you the bad stains. Because I'm gonna kind of do this thing a little darker than it's what it's supposed to be done. And this is kind of like the cheaper way to do it. Like I said, if you wanted to do this another way, you could do it with um, dye and then get it really dark and do it that way. Um, but this is kind of a play with it method. I'm using a brush. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a artwork type of a stain job. So I'll just keep doing this. Uh, let you guys watch here. Uh, I may put it on time lapse, back it up a little bit. But then I'm just talking real quick just to show you what I'm doing. And then it, this is going to take a few, probably a couple hours just to do this. And I probably won't get to finish today. I'll just uh, get it all ready. This should dry for a few hours after I'm done. And get that stain on there just right. It's just getting that perfect look. That's what you're trying to do. It's kind of a faux stain. It's not your normal way to stain. Normally you would stain and then just wipe it off. Um, and we're not going to do that. We're just going to kind of do. So what I've mixed up those two stains together to come up with a color that I like. A lot of times people go down and they go, hey man, I want to just, they buy one can of stain. And they go back, oh, I don't know if I like that one. And they go down, you buy another can of stain. And you go down, oh, I don't know if I want that one. And then you go down, you got six, seven cans of stain to do one job. Um, it's better if you get some shades that you like, get a couple different ones, and then one dark and one light, and kind of mix them and make your own color. Because then you're not going back and forth and, you know, got a whole bunch of empty cans of stain at the end of the job. Um, it's better to kind of work it you got to be good with your colors to know what you know come up with a formula you go okay well 50% of this color 50% of that color it's about where, where I want to be and then um, so the process is not this is not cookie cutter this is something you got to come and play with this is something that you know you got to you're gonna leave it on you're not gonna wipe it all off you know, wipe some of it off and then just start playing with it until it looks right until it looks like you what you want now this is a junk brush um, this is a china bristle Wooster. it was a gift at a show it's not my normal brush I would use um, in California most of the most of the china bristles are off the market you can't even buy them so um, I figured one that I got at a show works okay for doing stain not such a great brush for doing varnish so I figured it'd be a great job for this this brush to be used on or it's not gonna hurt anything so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and probably put her on time-lapse here back it up let you guys watch um, it's gonna take me I'm not gonna make you guys watch for a few hours you can kind of see we'll come back into the video and watch it talk to you in the next portion
All right, so this is kind of what it looks like prior to finish. Okay, so you don't end up with like a perfect, uh, even stain because you have to brush it on it and your brush mark is going to still be there, especially when you're going that dark. So again, if you want to make it more of the other way, you got to go with dye. Now when I do a dye job, whatever a regular stain job is, it's three times the amount because I got three times the process. This stuff's a lot more fragile. If you go to put dye on and you don't, you get that stuff, that stuff spills on the ground. Man, you may never get it cleaned up, you know, so I just charge like hell for it. Um, but this here is a little bit more than a regular stain. It's a gel stain job, so it's going to make it look a little bit better or darker. It's what they want, you know, so anyway, uh, that's the stain. So if you can see here, a bit of rope and the brush mark here, that's just the way it's going to be. There's no way around it it with some rope there's no way around it so anyway that's how the stain looks after it's on so it's the next day I had to let this dry overnight uh, yeah there's some little bit of brush mark in here and stuff like that it's typical with oak uh, with oak you know like I said if you really want oak to look good uh, you use dye and if you strip it and use dye you it doesn't work the same so this one's already finished. It's uh, trying to do dye over a stripped wood. It's difficult to do because what happens is anywhere there's finish, uh, the dye won't penetrate and then you'll have light spots in it. And you'll probably have to use this stuff to kind of touch up and it's just kind of a, a nightmare to try and make it look right. And uh, this doesn't work very good, especially on these types of panels where you have these raised panels with moldings and then inserts you know this type of a uh, wood door is really hard to do with that so like i said the compromise is to use uh, a, a brushable stain and uh, leave it on there and let it dry and this is what you use is gel stain for that you use uh, regular uh, acetone stain stuff like that um, it may not adhere properly so this stuff does so anyway uh let me go ahead and spray some varnish on here. Uh, I the best thing I could find right now is actually spar varnish, which I don't like varnish. I'd rather use urethane, but that's all they had. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that because that's what I can get. Um, I like the spar urethane a little bit better. Uh, I do have the inside cracks all taped off so that no overspray is gonna go inside the house, no dust or anything. It'll uh, it's all sealed up from the other side so that's an important thing to do when you're doing this otherwise you'll have overspray going in the house and uh, that could be a problem so I'm gonna, with that I'm gonna go ahead and spray now one of the things you'll notice when I spray because see how these most of the panels are vertical on this okay if you look here at these are vertical I'm gonna spray up and down it's probably the only time you'll ever see me spray up and down is on doors so because typically doors have more vertical stuff and it's easier to control where the paint's going or the, uh, the varnish is going or whatever you're using if you're spraying up and down. So most of the time I'll spray my doors up and down. Anything else I spray side to side because it's easier on your body to spray side to side. But on something this small it doesn't really make that much difference. It's just trying to make sure you have good control so you don't get runs. So this is a satin finish I use. I don't like to use anything shiny or glossy on doors. I just don't think they look very good. I think they look a lot better when they're satin. Uh, anybody use semi-gloss, I, I really wouldn't recommend it. I would always stay with satin because the grain in the doors tends to really distract that look and it just doesn't look very good. It looks better if it's, if it's satin. It looks smoother. Also on this door, I've removed these things here. Um, this is Culon weather stripping. Hopefully I get it in the video. Uh, this Q-Line weather stripping actually just inserts and it just pushes in place and you just kind of pry it out and just pull it back out. I'm probably going to replace these. Um, they're very cheap at Home Depot. They have them in black, brown, and white. So sometimes you have the wrong color ones and you just go grab some new Q-Lines. They're in the uh, 
sometimes if you tell if you look up online it's easier to find it Q-Line than it is to find weather stripping because we go to the weather stripping section they're not there um, they're actually where the doors are all right so another thing I do is I thin the paint about 10 percent with lacquer thinner and the reason I do that is to uh, make it flash a little bit faster so that when I go over it the second per, second time or actually it's about five percent sorry do not thin your material more than 10 percent when you're de dealing with varnish if you do it will fail very very quickly but I usually do five percent I just was gonna say not to put more than 10 percent in it so anyway we'll get this thing started I'll spray this out <laughs>
All right, so we're gonna let that flash. I'm gonna leave, take that out of the video here. Go ahead and pause it. Pause it. You can see uh, when it's wet, you can really see that heavy grain, and I honestly don't like that look at all. Um, so that's why I always use satin. Uh, and if you wanted to get rid of all that grain, it would take you know several coats. So you're talking about especially weathered wood like this was kind of weathered, and uh, it, it it kind of the grains lifted a bit. So it's been neglected a few times this door. So as I said, it's not really worthy of doing a uh, if you were to use a, a, a dye. It just wouldn't it just wouldn't look good. We're trying to do a halfway compromise, five thousand dollar door set or more. These are, you know, so if you can save them, make them look good, make it work for a little bit longer, it's worth it. Plus, it's real wood, you know, why waste trees? You know, why, why not just save them if you can make it work? So, uh, that's why I always use satin. You'll see uh, when it's completely dry, I don't know if I'll have videos of that, but um, when it's completely dry, it'll dry down almost like a, like a flat look. And then you, all you see really is the wood grain, and then that, that ends up being okay. All right. Talk to you guys in the next portion here. So this may or may not be recommended by the uh, paint manufacturer, but this works. I've done it for years. Um, I'm not telling you to do it. This is how I do it. Uh, but I go ahead and put one coat on, and then uh, I've heard guys go, "Oh no, you gotta let it dry overnight," and then you gotta go through and sand it again. I put one coat on, and I let it dry to the point where about. You know, it depends on, I dry it out with the air, with the cap spray air. Um, and then I flash it to where uh, it fingerprints with your finger. So the paint is, the fit surface is still open. But it's starting to just kind of just dry just a little bit. And then I'll go through and paint it one more time to get two coats on there. I've even done it three coats before and it doesn't wrinkle. And uh, doing the same method. Now, if you let it dry too far, then yeah, you're probably going to have a wrinkling situation. So that's probably why they don't put it on the label. But it does work, and uh, that's how I've done it for years. So you do one coat, and then your second coat, you know, you touch it. If it's smeary, it's too early. If it's, uh, if it's kind of sticky when you put your finger in it, it's ready to go. So if you do it too early, then you're going to get a bunch of runs, and that's not going to be nice. Uh, but if you do it right at that point, it'll uh, it'll dry out. Um, I think I need to let the right side dry just a little bit longer. So I'll do that right now, and then I'll continue the video.
All right, so that's it for the door. I have to let that sit there and dry. Then it'll turn out into a nice satin. It'll get rid of all that lumpy look. It just looks really, you know, that grain and oak. It just doesn't look very good to me. But at least, you know, the door's dark. Um, that's just basically what we're trying to do here is just make it dark. Not trying to, uh, you know, you're not going to make oak look like maple. You know, not unless you really do some real serious work to it. And then, why not at that point, you know, just replace the door. It's going to cost you that much money and labor and materials. Alright, so anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, I mean, people are going to go, oh, there's runs in it. There's no runs in that. It's just the finish. Uh, and if you try and thin it more, and you can sand it, put more coats on it, whatever you want to do, you can do that. Um, but by the time this dries out, uh, the, uh, the, you really don't notice the uh, highs and lows from the grain at that point. All right, talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. So this is what the doors look like after they're done. Let me walk up and look at it closer. And you see a little bit of rope in there and stuff, but uh, from this, you know, 20 feet away, it looked nice. You know, it's not bad. Not bad looking.